Hi, I'm Alex Berté. Welcome back to Mentor's Compass. So last week we talked about, that was a drum roll, I'm pointing at you, that means affirmation. That means what we talked about was affirmation. Uh, and in that discussion, we talked about the importance of affirming your son or student by recognizing the essential truths of his personhood, right? That who he is fundamentally, a child of God, filled with dignity, and your son or student is good, is good enough, and is worthy and deserving of love and acceptance, independent of what he does or accomplishes. Now, by now, hopefully you've had a chance to reflect on this and how your interactions with your son or your student affirm this reality. Now today we're going to talk about how you can affirm your son or student by cultivating and nurturing his noble aspirations and ambitions. Now if you're raising or mentoring boys, and there's a faculty member here at the Heights who should really tune in because he's got seven of them, which is awesome. Uh, back to my point, there's something important about them that you need to know. They love adventure. They are innately attracted to risk and things that seem dangerous. Right? They, it's, it's like my, my wife, right? lately she's telling me, every time she sees our oldest son climb a tree, she says she's fighting against instinct. She's remembering our conversations not to get in the way. Don't mess with his internal sense of risk and what he can handle and what he can't. I digress. Next, they like to participate in challenging work and experiences that are meaningful. And more often than you might think, they want to do that with you, right? So what boys need is someone, insert your name, to connect this innate drive within them to the good, right? So in other words, boys need someone to help them harness this energy, channel it, unleash it in the right ways and at the right times. Now, how do you do this? I've got four ideas for you to think about today. First, a boy needs his moral imagination to be cultivated through reading. Okay, hopefully not a big surprise there, right? But even if it is a surprise, no problem. In fact, when I first heard that, it was a surprise to me. So I put myself in that category. Uh, but I gotta tell you, I'm always edified when I hear about dads reading good books with their kids. Right? Or when teachers recommend specific outside reading to one of their students and then follow up with that student later to discuss important themes from the book along with their impressions. I mean, that's good in of itself, right? If dads are reading with their kids, right? Dads, if you're watching, they're hanging out with you. Good thing, right? And not to mention the fact that they're absorbing these lessons from tales filled with heroes who are self-sacrificing, great of heart, unflinchingly loyal, beloved friends in the deepest sense of the word, and undyingly devoted to something greater than themselves, right? I mean, those are all really awesome things, and you know what? Uh, I would kind of like to be like that. I'd like my kids to be like that. I'm sure you do too, right? So if planted properly, protected, and nurtured, rest assured these seeds will bear fruit in your son's or student's character. Second, a boy needs a language for noble ideals, right? a vocabulary for virtue. That's what I'm talking about. I was at a tutoring program once to observe the director. This guy was a guru, right? And, and I wanted to see how he did things because I wanted to put it in a bottle and I wanted to take it back with me to Washington, D.C., this program that I was working at. I remember watching and there was this boy who was doing his math homework. I mean, this kid was working hard. And then he kind of reached his breaking point. He was ready to throw in the towel. And the director just went up to him and said, come on fortitude, the difference between a B and an A, right? And this kid just, you know, went up and like kind of pumped himself up and it was like Rocky Balboa going back against Apollo Creed. And I was sitting there and I was like, wow, right? This is awesome. So, you know, boys need to know words like fortitude, self-control, integrity, professionalism, right? They need to know what these words mean, right? And if they do, if this boy does, let's personalize it, if your boy does, these ideals can serve as reference points by which he measures his words, his thoughts, and his actions. Third, a boy needs to be exposed to opportunities where he can connect the ideals he wants to live by with real life interactions that allow him to put them into practice. Nowadays, boys are exposed to everything and anything under the sun 
and a lot of times it's stuff they should never be exposed to in the first place or it's just stuff that comes way too soon, right? So it's up to you, parents, teachers, mentors, to make sure that they're exposed to the right stuff, right? To help them build that sense of self, that, that character. You know, it's like uh, setting up a family visit to a nursing home or a soup kitchen on a Sunday. Help them grow in the virtue of service, right? Charity for neighbor. Or, you know, take them on a mystery trip, right? I know some dads who, who say, mystery trip, dress warm, and put on comfortable shoes, and then they'll end up hiking Old Rag or going to Great Falls or something like that, which really awakens in their son this sense of adventure and appreciation for nature. And it's kind of exciting not knowing where you're going. Right? You can help your son or your student grow in professionalism. Work on a family project together. Right? Show them what work well done looks like. Right? Teach them by your example what it's like to do your best work. And then afterwards, be proud together. Go out for a soda. Make a sundae. Right? Something like that. And that's a perfect segue into this funny little story that happened last night. We were having cocoa, my boys and I. Cocoa with a marshmallow in it. And afterwards, you know, my kids, I mean, they were really milking it. I mean, gosh. Uh, they are just mindful eaters when it comes to their sweets. And so after it was all done, they said, Dad, let's do this tomorrow. And I was like, oh man, great. I'm starting a habit of drinking hot cocoa and eating sweets every single night. And I said, well, you know what, guys? We can't do it tomorrow. But Friday is a major feast day, right? Friday is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. So why don't we celebrate with cocoa and marshmallows then? All right, and they got all excited. And not only that, not only am I getting excited about cocoa, but also they're asking me about the Immaculate Conception. What is it? Why is that so important? Gosh, Dad, I want to be perfect too, right? And that sparked a conversation about a desire to seek holiness in the ordinary events of everyday life. And even though we can't be perfect, we should strive to, right? So uh, what's this all about? You know, it's about teaching your son or your student that his life is not just a series of isolated events where different parts of himself are neatly compartmentalized, but instead that there's a, a unity to his life, right? And what matters most is that he put his whole heart into what he's doing from beginning to end. And lastly, boy needs to be reminded that he's living in an adventure right now, right? Not tomorrow, not down the road, not 10 years from now, right now. He may not know what part of the adventure he's in yet, but he's in one. Right? And where he is now is an important part of his story. Right? I heard somebody say once that God is often like a GPS and that he can recalibrate when we've made a wrong turn. Right? But it sure is easier to fulfill his plan, which will be the ultimate adventure of our life, if we work to be ready for the journey along the way right now. Right? So some of you may know this. Most of you, actually probably all of you don't, uh, there was a time when I was pursuing an acting career. Nothing came of it, right? I remember one time I was feeling down in the dumps because I think for about the 35th time or so I'd been rejected at an audition. Right? Humbling experience. And I was talking with somebody and I said, oh, man, I, I think I want to quit. And he said, look, Ali, keep working on your craft, right? Keep working on your craft. And when the time comes, right, when the right audition comes along, you'll be ready. And it just stuck with me, right? Kind of like this other quote that uh, a living legend around here, Professor Eddie Smith, got to give him a shout out. I heard him say once, I think he was quoting Frederick Douglass. He said, luck, there is no such thing as luck. Luck is what happens when preparation and opportunity converge. All right, so, okay, what does that mean for you as a parent or as a mentor? All right, you got to teach this boy, your boy or this student, teach him that he is the hero in his own life story. Right? And that this story is a romance, because God loves him, and it's an adventure, because he's called to greatness. And he's got to prepare himself for whatever his vocation is, whatever his mission in life is right now. Okie dokie. That is our, I haven't said okie dokie in years. But that's all we have time for this week. So here are some things that you might consider over the course of the following week. And remember, be sure to print up the PDF that is associated with this episode. Uh, now, number one, consider taking some time to identify the ideals your son or student should be striving for. And then remember, what a boy sees in passing of you or what he overhears in your conversation is often more important than what you say to him explicitly. 
right? You can't give what you don't have. That's something that we're really big around here at the Heights and saying, you can't give what you don't have. So you've got to be the change. Number two, take a moment to examine the inputs in your son or your student's life, right? You got to be in the know. What's he watching? Does he have a computer in his room? Does he have unfettered access to his phone? Does he just get to watch Netflix whenever he wants? You get to see what that is. What kind of books is he reading? What is he consuming, right? And are you as a parent, and to a lesser degree to a mentor, well, not to a lesser degree, you gotta be thinking about these things. Are you thinking about these things that he's exposed to critically and with a discerning eye? Number three, determine whether your son or mentee has any opportunities for greatness, right? Does he get to participate in activities that make him feel like he matters? You know, like people actually depend on him. And if not, it might be something that you need to give some thought to. All right, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining us here at Mentor's Compass. I'm Alex Berte. I hope to see you next week.